What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, I'm gonna be talking about while loops in Java. And while loops are how you iterate over things. There's different ways to iterate over things. And while loops are going to be the first and probably the easiest way and almost like the gateway to your understanding of how to iterate over things. And iterating over things is very important in programming because that is almost the power of computers is the ability to just sit there and do something over and over and over and never get tired and never complaining. <laughs> Essentially, computers are smart, but they're also kind of dumb in a, stu in a, in a, in a kind of a strange way if you think about it. And the most important thing to understand about while loops is when do you use a while loop? What is the use case? Why do we use while loops over other um, iterables? Iterations, forms of iteration. You use while loops, this is the key point, when you don't know when it's going to end. With a for loop, you know when a for loop is going to end. And if you don't know what a for loop is, that's okay. But with a while loop, the trick to understanding when to use a while loop over a for loop is just to ask yourself, do I know when this is going to end? Is this going to go on forever? If the latter is true, if it's going to go on forever and you don't know when it's going to end, it is indeed a use case for a while loop. If you just look at a while loop, it's very simple to, it's pretty simple to understand. Maybe not very simple, but it's pretty simple. While. This just indicates this is the type of um, iteration that's going to happen. So what is in here? What does this do? If this is true, this is going to keep going and everything inside of these brackets is going to be executed. Nothing out here is going to be executed. Nothing up here is going to be executed. Just everything within these brackets. And that's a very important thing to understand because a lot of times people can get confused and they're trying to manipulate variables out here. You need to be cognizant that within a while loop, these brackets almost mean in a, in a kind of like a weird way that everything inside of here is its own little self-contained program. And anything that you want to execute is going to be this. This is going to be executing. So what do you think will happen if I run this? And I'll get rid of all this <laughs> junk right here. It doesn't really help anything. So if you run this, this is going to run infinitely. And what's going to happen, and I was practicing beforehand, so forgive me. But so if you run this while loop, what is going to happen is that it's just going to run forever. And in a in a a real program, you probably don't want that. In very rare cases, you just want something to run forever. And I'm just going to go ahead and have a program shout my name because if people are shouting your name enough, you will do something cool. And I'm just going to go ahead run this. And as you can see, this little if you just saw that little blank right there. This thing's running infinitely, and if I don't turn it off, it's going to crash my computer. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it off and. You can see that computer just ran this probably maybe 10,000 times. And that's how quickly a computer can run. It can quickly iterate over everything. Almost like in a blink of an eye, that thing just ran like a thousand times. That's absolutely insane. That's why computers are so powerful. But we need to be able to tell it when to stop or our computer is going to crash all the time. Not unless you're some kind of like crazy computer maverick who just does whatever he wants to and crashes computers all day. Me and you, we have to live in the real world. So what we have to do is we have to add a we have to add a counter. We have to add an incrementer. We have to tell this thing when to stop. And if we don't, like I said, the computer is going to crash. So how do we do that? We add an incrementer. And then on the outside, we have something that stores it. Because, like I said, pay attention to the brackets. And then we have in here something that's going to increment it. So... Each time this, this thing runs, it's going to go one, you know, just up here. Just think about this logic. The computer's not actually doing this. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to run. It's going to go down here. It's going to print hello, goodbye. Then it's going to go one. It's going to do it again. Two, three, 
four, and then it's going to do this all the way to ten. And once it gets to ten, it's gonna it's gonna break. It's gonna go out, and then it's not going to actually execute anymore. And this condition is no longer going to evaluate, and our while loop will exit correctly. And this is very real world because this is more than likely how you will see things like actually done. You will set some type of counter or you will set some type of mechanism that's going to prevent it from running like that the whole entire time. So let's go ahead in here and let's code up an example that is more real world where we are actually um, exiting out of our while loop. And we're gonna go use the same example that we had before. We're gonna go int, we're going to set our counter, then we'll go up here, go while, and let's just say we're gonna set this thing to 100. So we'll go 100, then we're gonna go up here and set this to, I'm gonna say, hello, goodbye, number, <laughs> our, hello, our hello, goodbye number is going to equal count. That makes no sense. But the Beatles did make a real, that is a really good song. I do love uh, Hello Goodbye, the song. Actually, if you like Hello, if you like the Beatles, which everybody does, make sure to smack that like button. So we're gonna go down here. And actually one way that we could do it, and we will do this in just a second, is you could also come down here and put an if statement and you could also exit out of it that way, but let's not get too carried away. And let's just um, have this one, let's just do this one, um, while loop with the counter inside of this uh, the brackets up here. Okay, so in theory this should run 100 times. So let's see what happens. So I'm going to go up here, hello goodbye, and our hello goodbye number we iterated through and we did it 100 times. We are good to go. So the next thing that we need to do is we're going to set an if, and we're going to set what's called a break statement. So if this does not run. So if this does run, we want it to actually go out and we want it to break down here. So we're going to set an is statement so that it breaks when it gets to 100. Same thing as before, no changes. And once it gets to the part where it actually completes and satisfies the requirement that we want, maybe not necessarily the, what the while loop wants, it's going to break. And break is essentially for a fancy word for get out of this iteration. And this also exists in for loops as well too. So you will see the same exact thing in for loops, which we will talk about in the next video. So we're gonna go through here, we're gonna go ahead and run it. And our hello goodbye, we get to 99. And let's see here, it's going to exit out at 100. So if we want to maybe exit out at exactly 100, maybe set it to 101, or we could also set maybe is greater than or equal to, we can set to is greater than or less than or equal to, but I think a better would probably be just set it to 101. Kind of makes a little bit more sense. I think you can pick whichever one you want. It doesn't really matter. Anyways, that is going to be the video for today. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.